Yo, Adam Sachs, I'm a guy in a cube, another week, another roundup, a little bit of everything this week. I also hope that everyone is staying safe and is well. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Mark Lelevelde's got a blog post looking at the on-premises data gateway and how do you monitor those items, especially if you have multiple gateways in your organization. Sorry, R2. This blog post is actually part two in a two-part series. The first blog post went through like how to actually monitor the individual gateway. This one takes it a step further and actually looks at how do you determine if the data source is up or down. This uses a combination of you know, Azure as well as Power BI, so Azure Logic Apps, Log Analytics, and Power BI streaming data sets also. So there's a lot of stuff involved in this, but it could give you an idea of how you could potentially go about capturing this data and then building some process on top of it. You don't have to use the technologies that Mark uses in his blog post, but you do have to collect the data somehow, store it somewhere, so that way you can then report on it or alert on that. And however you go about doing that is up to you. This will kind of give you an idea of where you can go with it. So great blog post, Mark. Marco Russo's got a blog post. Actually, it's an older item that he's had out there and it was updated recently to include some new capabilities from a DAX perspective and Power BI. I didn't actually know this article existed out there and I'm pretty sure Patrick didn't either because we were talking about the same topic last week. The article is from SQL to DAX projection and so the concept here is really if I write a select statement in SQL, how would I write that same select statement in DAX? The examples here are fairly basic, just from a simple select statement and then working in distincts and adding in a calculation column or columns from other tables. And what Patrick was running into last week was more crazy of like a nested query and using group buys and things of that nature. So you can get really complex and be able to then take that and say, what would the DAX equivalent be of that SQL statement? So if you're working with SQL and you're working with DAX and you want maybe a way to figure out how to wrap your head around it and how would you convert a SQL statement into DAX, this is a great article and there's a couple different articles that are part of a series in this item. So I'm definitely gonna be checking it out. I'm guessing that Patrick will be checking it out as well. So links is always down in the description below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items, so go check it out. The big thing that's top of mind for everyone right now is coronavirus, because it's affecting everyone, right? And it's in all of the news, it's, it's just consuming everything, everyone's thoughts, and if you're anything like my household, you're thinking about it, you're discussing it, you know, trying to prepare for things and whatnot. And by the way, for all the latest and greatest information on that, in terms of what's actually happening, be sure to check out the CDC website and the World Health Organization, linking those down below. One item that I've seen in news reports, and I've been looking at this myself for probably about two, three weeks now, is the Johns Hopkins report that they put together using the ArcGIS information, and it's also backed on Azure, so that's pretty cool. But this is the report that everyone's kind of looking at in terms of cases and deaths and things of that nature, just from a data perspective. The cool thing that they did down at the bottom is they actually include a link to the data. It's sitting out on GitHub. You can go download it and create your own report. And so, you know, everyone watching this ideally is into creating reports. And a lot of folks have actually taken that data set and gone and created their own reports. So I've seen items from Gil Revive where he walked through how to create some items and provided a template as well. Ruth Pozuelo over at Kerbal YouTube channel also did a walkthrough of items. And there's been some other reports too. Paul Turley has something going on over on his website. Jamie Johnston's got an item that he shared and Rob Foster also has an item that he shared out on YouTube. And so there's a lot of folks that are coming together and just playing with this data and seeing what they can do to create a cool report. So if you are sitting around and maybe you're not working and you want to play around with some things, maybe check out this data set and see if you can work around. I was told, I haven't looked at the data myself just because I've been crazy busy, but I've been told from some folks that the data is very dirty and you've got to do a lot of cleanup and stuff from a Power Query perspective to get it to report right. So just be aware of that. It could be a cool, challenging task for you to learn the product and you know, just maybe make something positive out of this experience. Again, links down below. Definitely be sure 
Remember, check the CDC and the WHO website for the facts. If you are into paginated reports, there was a blog post detailing out a new video series out on the Power BI YouTube channel, which is a paginated report in a day course. And so this course walks you through how to create paginated reports. These videos are just freely available for you to go watch out on the Power BI YouTube channel. There's a playlist that I'll have linked down below that you can go through all of the videos. There was also a comment in the blog post that they're working on getting the material for the course, so the PowerPoint deck and the other items out available for you. Uh, probably gonna be out on GitHub somewhere, so hopefully that'll be updated shortly. I'd love to hear in the comments below what your thoughts are on this Paginated Reports in a day, as well as, you know, are you using Paginated Reports and why are you using that versus Power BI? It's always an interesting discussion. So let me know down in the comments below about that and we'll keep that conversation going. In two weeks on April 2nd at 8 a.m. Pacific time, the Business Applications Group, which is headed by James Phillips and includes Dynamics, Power BI, the whole Power Platform, they're gonna be having a virtual event to outline what's coming next in the next semester, which is April from October. So they're gonna go in and show some demos, they're gonna talk about concepts, all these items just to get you in your head aware of what is coming from a roadmap perspective for these products. So this is more than just Power BI, but Power BI is gonna be included in this and I'm really excited to see what's in store for the next several months. There's just looking at the release notes in general, are, there's a ton of cool items that are on its way. So if you're not doing anything on April 2nd, be sure to check out this virtual event. All right, I wanna hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. I don't know, let me know down in the comments below and we'll keep that conversation going. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.